Hi, I'm Jeff Bice Cars, and today I'm having a fun day with Richard at Wizard Sports and Classics, and we're going to look at some cars, and we're not talking about any conspiracy theories. It's going to be fun. I'm out of here. So, Wizard Sports and Classics, based up in Mobberley. Uh, I think that's in Cheshire or Chester. I never know if Cheshire and Chester are the same thing, but Richard sells some cool cars. He's a proper car guy, and he's a real human as well. In that top, you do look a little bit like you've just nicked your dad's car. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of these car dealers that is actually a real human. So, he has this Cavalier 1.6 uh, GLS, I believe it is, which is very cool, and the Lexus LS400 behind, which we just collected earlier on, and uh, I drove it home. Here's some video of me doing that whilst this plane goes over. So this car is from 1998, but the LS model from Lexus first arrived in 1989. And what I love about it is it virtually didn't change in terms of looks for 20 years between 1989 and 2000 the body style of the lexus ls remained pretty much the same because it is after all a luxury sedan that is what ls stands for it really is as japanese and as boring as that ls just stands for luxury sedan but what happened in the late 70s is the American car industry started to change. As the luxury market started to be taken over by the likes of Mercedes and BMW, and the smaller everyday compact car market was being dominated not just by the Germans with cars like their Volkswagen Golf, Rabbit, uh, but also the Japanese. So in 1989, when the Lexus LS was launched, it was launching to a country, i.e. America, that loved luxury cars and was already familiar with buying Japanese cars. So all it had to do was nibble at the heels of BMW and Mercedes and to some degree Jaguar and Daimler and nibble it did. Not only did it nibble, boy it sold well. These cars were really well received in America and they sold very successfully. It feels very well appointed and I tell you what, the build quality, this car feels like it came out of the factory yesterday. Oh, it's lovely, it's so wafty and I'm not shouting at my camera because the car's noisy, it's just beautifully quiet. It's amazing, when you're sat at a traffic light, you can hardly hear the engine. <laughs> Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> There's people in the traffic light staring at me. They're all looking around to see where the supercar is. It's this understated luxury sedan. Yes, I was very impressed with the Lexus, but much more excited to see and experience this Cavalier. <laughs> now, it's an absolutely beautiful thing, especially in this sunlight. Oh, look at that for a shot right there. I should have been a photographer. Um, lovely, look at those headlights. What an elegant little car this is. Um, I'm sure you're all there in the comments saying, I remember my dad had one of these. I remember I passed my test in one of these. Um, and you used to see them, even when I was a kid, you used to see Cavaliers in this shape, but sadly, no longer. This one, I believe, is a survivor. I'll check with Rich to find out if it's been restored, but I think I can't be original, can it? It can't be. Uh, I will just put a note just down here, look there as to whether it's been restored or not look at that red velour this is what cars used to look like people let me see how many buttons we've got inside let's count them one two that's a switch that doesn't count and a radio Ah, oh, what a simpler time it was yeah, back in the old days when stuff just used to work, he says. This is a carburettor and a manual choke. If you don't know what that is, ask your grandparents. Um, I think it's just lovely. I think in a world where cars are getting horrendously complex, owning and driving something like this is like some sort of spirituality for the soul. absolutely beautiful this is for sale on ebay right now 
Um, what's the date today? I'm not sure. 20th of uh, January, something like that. And I believe it ends in four days. Um, you should go and get a bid on this car. You really should, because it's just lovely, and I don't think you'll find another one. Look at it in this light. What a fantastic car. Next to the big Lexus. Uh, the price of this is as yet undecided. Oh. So is that original? Yep. So it's a proper like, so you said it's been painted at some point. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the, obvious. The but look that's at the door original. Lock. Door lock. Look at that. So the, I think the car's just lived a very, very nice life. I think it has. It's ab absolutely look beautiful. The, well, look at the chrome as well. That's yeah, the chrome. Somebody's, somebody's cared, cared for it, haven't they? Do you know what though? It's it, it's pretty honest, isn't it? Um, the chrome on it is honest. It's not perfect. No. But would you really want perfect? No, I think I it's, it it's used. I mean, even down here on the is, was that optional? Was it? Yeah. This is an option. Yeah, it's part of the GL spec. Oh yes, the luxury pack. Yeah. And you Four said seats. the center console as well. Was, yeah, where the handbrake is. Well, you, that's, that's all of option. all of that black plastic is an option. Correct. Yeah. I love it. Heated rear windscreen an option. These door trims were an option. Yeah. The rakish they're referred to in the catalogue. Are they? Yep. And then Superb. trims, the sporty trims. It's just beautiful. I love this car. And what's really funny is in your, um, you know, Richard does storage as well. And there's a few cars in there that we won't show on camera, but some of them are ludicrously desirable by oh, yeah. most standards. And uh, it was this car that I thought, <laughs> forget all those. I'm not interested. Is it because it was bright red? I don't know. I, I think, I think what it is, because I spend a lot of time in and around cars and moaning about the technology on cars, this is like, you know how you sometimes crave going from a smartphone back to a Nokia brick? Yeah. Well, this is your Nokia Red brick, green isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. But not only that, I think... There's two, it's... there's two buttons inside it. I counted them. There's only yeah. two. <laughs> and they both work. And they both but, work. Um, it, because you haven't seen one for such a long time. Most yeah. classic cars, you've seen them, haven't you? Somewhere you've seen them to show us something. I can't remember the last time I saw a Mark II. A and Mark being a there. car guy as well, you sort of get bored of it all, don't you? Well, yeah, and there's only so many nice... RS 2000, you can go and have a look. Absolutely. And yeah. they all look the same, but I can't remember the last time I saw one of those, which is why I bought it. Oh, it's lovely. It's brilliant. Um, the Honda Insight. Tell me about the Honda Insight. I should know more about the Honda Insight than I do. Hybrid. Very first hybrid. So 1.5 petrol. No, I think the 1300. Yeah. Three cylinder VTEC Honda engine, obviously. This should have been the future, but we well, went down the electric route. So what let these things down was two seats. Right. Having a car that's two seats, with was this expensive for a start, kind of was a very, very, um, I suppose the market for it So it's two seats small. because the battery pack's in the back? Uh, not necessarily, I think it was to do with size. As soon as they put another set of seats in, the car would increase. Right. And the mass therefore would increase, and then the range and everything. Yeah, so okay, decided, got Let's you. continue with our concept. Yeah. Whatever else the world decides to do with this concept afterwards is up to them. Yeah. But the next generation of this would have been the Toyota Price, wouldn't it? They yeah, would you? Yeah. Which yeah. is four seats. Yeah. Which presumably stole the market. But these things, they do, they, you see them for sale, they've got 250,000 miles on yeah. them. Yeah. Because they're nice to drive. They're mm. easy to drive. They're easy to drive fast as well. But I clock 70 miles an hour at 70 MPG in this. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and I think some people, there's competitions, particularly yeah. in the States, where they get 120, 130 miles an hour yeah. at MPG. Out They've got it. a real cult following, haven't yeah, they, these cars? Well, you can see why. You either love them or you hate them. You can. I mean, they're, they're not pretty, but they're pretty athleti aesthetically because of what they are, not by yeah. design. I mean, the, the design makes them pretty, I think. So is this, this for sale or is this one yeah, yours? Yeah, no, this is for sale. There's a guy who's pushed it about, to, I think he's about to pull the trigger, lives in um, Holland. Yeah. He's about to, I was just looking at the import duty costs, etc. Okay. Um, which hopefully won't be prohibitive. I don't see any reason why not. Well, I'll direct people to the website and if it's on the website, then fine. And the MG, uh, should we have a look at the MG? Yeah, of course. I'll tell you why I want to have a look at the MG, because I don't want to have a look at the MG, if that makes sense. I'm not interested in these no, at all. That has had a £17,000 shell. Okay, yeah. That's... Somebody has spent that kind of money on that car in the past, which doesn't reflect in the price either. It's not the price of a, a normal one plus yeah. 17 grand. They all make the same money. So how much is this? Um, we've not decided yet. It's going to be around about 10, 11 grand. Up, okay. There or thereabouts. Fine. So yeah, I mean, if you've got to go buy a shelf, 17 grand and do all the work. It's a bit of a bargain, oh, isn't it? Yeah, whoever did it, did it for love rather yeah. than anything else. And I, I can appreciate an MGB. I mean, I'm, I know there's a lot of them around and maybe well, that's it. There are a lot you, of them you see a lot of them, but but this that also is, means there's lovely. lots of spares around and they're cheap. Oh, absolutely. Huge community, cheap to buy, cheap to run, easy to live with. Um, and like with this one, you've got a new shell, so. Yeah, well, they're typically with these, if somebody's put wire wheels on it, yep. chrome wire wheels, yep. um, they look nice, but they, 
you know, they really should have steel wheels or they should have painted wheels. Or painted, I definitely prefer painted. the wire wheels. I think they look great. Yeah, but they do the period, don't they? They look yeah, great. Yeah. And they yeah. go with the, you know, you need some string back gloves as well. Yeah, But they're, they're, they're a lovely little car and they're cheap and easy to fix as well. Yeah. And you're into a classic car, you know, some of these are eight to 10 grand yeah. you know, for the for nice ones. And then some of them are 20 grand for and 30 grand for ones that are, you know, prime. But there's no difference between them. They no, no, there's they not. They will there's give not. you the same experience. Yes, yeah, that's right. When you that's come right. to sell it, somebody else will go, I like the look of that. And I they'll all break down. Um, I'm not so sure actually. They're actually not bad because they're they're really like yeah, they are reliable. Got you. You just have a you know a box of bits with you. They can fix well, them on, that's the, just on it. the way. Yeah, be be prepared. But again, overheating was an issue. But majority of people sorted that out by having electric fans. Yeah. So they run you know they run cool now. They don't overheat anymore. Look at that design. It's like the world's most boring car, but that's kind of perfect. And as I said earlier on in my video, that shape pretty much didn't change from 1989. So this is a 1998, I believe, and it carried on until 2000. The thinking man's luxury sedan. Also, the gold touches were optional. Gold badging, which you'll remember from back in the day. Uh, you only chose the gold badges if you were an actual baller. Um, it's got a cheek exhaust on it as well. Okay, maybe that was a bit silly, but this is YouTube. So let's try that again with the Lexus, this time with the traction control on and see how fast I can get over that ice. Aeroplane. No aeroplane. Definitely damps the sound, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. I love it. It's very, very likely. They're all V8s, weren't they, as well? Yeah, yeah everything the was a V8. From day one. Yeah, from day one. There's no other engine. There were the LS400s, that was it. The only yeah. changes were colour and spec, etc. And the majority of them were all the same sort. Yeah. You know, they went with very plain colours. It's only in the later years they started to go with a bit larry mm. colours, like this purple one. This is lovely. And gold badges. Yeah. That these are not only better than the American cars and the European equivalent, Mercedes, BMW, etc. They are better, so you're never ever going to go back to owning. They wanted to create yeah. brand loyalty. So, how much is this going to be? It's going to be it's going to be three hundred quid, isn't it? A year. No, I mean, how much is uh, oh, what's the price wise? Price? I don't know. It's going to be four grand or four, four, four and a half grand. So, so four and a half five. I mean, if you put that in BMW money or Mercedes money, um, there's much more risk associated at that price point. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. You're a brave man who buys an S-Class of this year. Oh, 100%. Even the, you know, the 5-litre V8, yeah, okay, super reliable engine, um, but it's not the it's not the engines that go no, wrong, is it? It's the buttons you push pushing. <laughs> exactly, it's all the buttons. Yeah. So, um, have you done your have you done your button roulette yet? Uh, or is, it, is it is it is it? I've already is it futile. I've already said that knob and switch roulette in this car is futile because everything <laughs> will work. And yeah. I announced that whilst testing the sunroof, which obviously worked. Yeah. So, tasty exhaust though, which is slightly unusual. We do, we do think it's got a fruity exhaust on it, considering the owner who owned it. You wouldn't have expected him to have fruity exhaust, would you? But he did have a Range Rover as well, didn't he? He did have a, TD, yeah, mm. a V8 Range Rover or a V6, whichever one it V6, was. V6, yeah. So, But that was only because you needed a car that was higher to get into because he'd had new hips. Oh, okay. So it wasn't a... It I'll tell you what, if you've got a bad hip... Yeah, but he was getting in and out of it. There was the yeah, issue. yeah, I know. But if your hip is on the way and you still get in and out of the Lexus, there can't be a much more comfortable car than this. Do you know, we sold one of these to a guy who turned up in an ML. Yeah, yeah. Um, an ML350. And his wife went in this, who had the same problem. She had arthritis and the car yeah. was giving her loads of problems. She jumped in this, she went down the road and came out, she goes, we're having it. <laughs> and they did a straight swap for an ML. Amazing. On one that was similar to this. Yeah, yeah. And he's he, 10 years older, but he, he said, no, this suits our purpose. We like it. We'll take it. But again, like you've got small wheels with massive tires. Correct. And, you don't and proper have... suspension. But if you tried to go and buy an equivalent of this today, you wouldn't get that. No, because they've all got Sportline... Exactly. Suspension, which means that that's going on corners fast. But the daft thing about this thing is it's it's a complete and utter sleeper. Yeah. Because you can mind your own business. It'll kick down. Oh, I did. I did. I did. And I, and I suddenly I realised I was going far too fast. What are this? I bet they're 340 horsepower, aren't they? Something like that. They'll be around that, yeah. Yeah. But it picks it heels up really well for a heavy car when I floored it, it goes for it. But it, the nature of the car, big steering wheel, big thing, you don't, you don't want to drive it that no. way, but it's nice to know that you can. Yeah. I wouldn't mind crashing this car. Okay. I, I really would. You can buy it and crash it. No problem. But no, that's what I mean. I was driving along and, you know, someone did something funky up ahead and, and, and you think, don't you know, what would happen? And you think, well, I would be absolutely <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. The consequence would be putting your, putting your washers on, yeah. cleaning your windscreen and then making sure there's, a there's no debris. There's a golf coming off the front. <laughs> yeah.